What up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward, and thank you guys for kicking off your morning with the crew. We got the whole starting five here, and today we got Rod Beard as the sixth man, a Detroit News sports editor in chief. And you guys already know what time it is. Let's cue up that drum roll. You guys gonna help me today? Let's go. Hey, yo! Shout out to the legend, Detroit News, Rod Beard. And I'll ask you again, brother, how are you doing this morning? I got to get Rod's thoughts. It is a uh, it is a wonderful Wednesday morning. I wish it was 80 degrees. It is not 80 degrees <laughs> somewhere. It is 80 degrees, just not here. Um, this piston season, man, this is... Sheesh. I've never seen a football team that was losing in the fourth quarter, no matter how many points they're losing by. I've never seen them take a knee. It just feels like Pistons fans want to take a knee on this season. Like, there's nothing that you want to see. Like, hey, we need some more Cade and Durham minutes. Eh, I mean, sure, but that could happen anytime. It's almost like you just want to shut this whole season down with, with these couple of weeks left and just like, mm -hmm. what do you want to see? What, yeah. what is there to say, hey, I need some more Fontecchio and Jaden Ivey minutes? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what people want to see. I don't know what there is to show and to gain from the rest of this season. Um, and we always talk about, well, a couple more wins or, or gaining a winning mentality. I just don't have the stomach for it. It's just, it's it's tough. It's a really, really tough watch from game to game, just knowing that they're a little bit undermanned. And, and injuries are playing a part of that too. But just for what's left and for these couple of games, and it's been that way the past few seasons with, all the injuries and everything else just like i don't know where the excitement is it's not even yeah and we've talked about this it's not even hey they might get the number one pick in the lottery uh so then what <laughs> what happens <laughs> at that point? yeah it, seriously that it it's not i don't know i don't know and 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 this is what troy weaver is going to have to figure out um is is how to inject something in this and get some Spend that free agency money, use that draft pick wisely, assuming it's a top three. Just kind of what how do you how do you resuscitate this fan base and make them care more about what's going on right now? It's just really, really tough. You know what, man? I think that you embody right now a lot of what Detroit Pistons fans feel in general. And I wrote an article and it's a little bit different tone. Like the tone of the articles as the season has gone on has gotten a lot more critical a lot more looking toward not the not necessarily the far future because we're not at the beginning of this restore or rebuild or whatever they want to call it. This team is doing exactly what we said in the beginning of the season we didn't want to see them do. We knew that they weren't going to have a winning season. But to have your veterans injured, to have your young players injured, and to be ending the season with G-leaguers rather than being able to build up some type of, we know you don't really came momentum from season to season, but being able to have something that you can hang your hat on they put out there, and we covered this with the Monty Williams clip off of a question I was able to ask them in practice, what were your goals in the season? And they said, run through the tape. This looks like anything but it. When you talk about taking a knee, like, hey, you know what? We're down 20 points. We're just going to take a knee with 10 minutes left. Let's just forfeit. That's not anything that people want to see. I feel so bad for the season ticket holders. I feel so bad for them. There's a bevy of them that sit around us in that Section 104 media and to be able to get to know some of them. Shout out to Christian Smith. I told him I would shout him out, man. To try to get to know some of these people and know why they're doing this, they hang on to a little bit of hope. But even them, even those diehards are getting to the point now where they're like, you know what? Enough is enough. And they're like me now. No more project players. This is where I'm at now. No more, uh, no more young players as it relates to your actual core of winning. No more going another offseason without adding something to it. At this point in time, it's a fair question to ask, does Troy Weaver deserve to be here this summer? The only reason why, the only reason why I'm even saying, you know what, get it done this summer, Troy Weaver, or else, at least as it relates to my book, is because I just believe he's going to be the guy that's going to be able to kind of pull the trigger as it relates to the deals happening this offseason. With that type of cap space, with the draft capital, with the young assets, it is time now for this team to do something substantial for their supporters and for their fans. It's not just kind of this four years that Troy Weaver has been at it. And we talked about this, you know, between the Red Wings and the, and the Detroit Pistons, the Red Wings have been rebuilding for a little bit longer. 
at, at least under Steve Eiserman. But the Detroit Pistons, if you go beyond just the Troy Weaver era, this thing has been mired in mediocrity to the worst basketball we've ever seen played in the Detroit Pistons history since Tom Gorris has taken over. It is time for them to put an end to this. We've seen them in years past be able to go and knock on the door of like the ninth and eighth seed by going and making some mid free agency picks. <sighs> Out of this young core, do I believe this young core can work? I do. But I do believe that after assessing for this season, that there are some changes and some hard decisions have to be made about who gets a starting position, who's actually going to be here next year. Right now, the only safe person in my eyes is Cade Parker Cunningham, and mm-hmm. that is it. Beyond that, I don't know who's safe. I don't know who's safe. You got to go and get NBA talent on this roster. You got to go out there and get some players. We used At the trade deadline and such, we scoffed at names like Tobias Harris. We scoffed. Some people scoffed at names like, like, like Zach Levine. Some people scoff at names like DeMar DeRozan. At this point in time, bring in any of those guys. Bring in multiple of those players because this Detroit Pistons team is void. It is absolutely void of NBA talent that can compete on any level right now. Do you get? Do they have some hopefuls? Yes, of course. There's going to be some hope uh, in the type of player that Ivy can be, in the type of player that Duran can be, in the type of player that Asar can be. But at this point in time, I don't think that it's fair for them to not just waste the season ticket holders' time, but I don't think it's fair for them to waste Cade Cunningham's time either. Rod, I I've been heated about this. I wrote an article about what they can do. It is up on WoodsportsSports.com in terms of what the free agency looks like, which players might be disgruntled on the trade market, as well as what they might need to do during the draft. Some of the players that I actually like the most this offseason, they actually play Jalen Duran's position, but they have better defensive ratings. They play with a little bit different tenacity. Nick Claxton is a guy you guys have kind of heard me talk about uh, as, as well. I really like him. I really like what he brings to the table as it relates to rim protection. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because we haven't seen any identity, any semblance of an identity of what we've liked, liked about past Detroit Pistons teams. I will give them this. They had a some decent stretches. They improved their defensive efficiency, and now they've kind of turned this thing over to this, hey, let's let the G-Leaguers finish this out. I got questions about if Isaiah Stewart now is in, super injury-prone, probably the most injury-prone player on the squad right now. And I have questions about the tenacity that Jalen Duran plays in the middle of the paint. Every good Pistons team has had the identity of not just defense, but defense starting from the inside out. And it just seems to be so lacking, man. My hat honestly goes off to all of the people that still support and that still watch this thing. Rod, is there any anything that you see as it relates to this offseason ahead that even kind of gets your ears perked up about whether this team can head in the future? Man, you are heated today. That is <laughs> that's a word. <laughs> just, just a whole word. Um. I will say this, and while you were were talking, it it, it kind of stoked a thought. How many minutes would you guess that you've had the a what you would probably call the a combination of um, Cade, Ivy, Asar, Stewart, and Duran? I would happen to believe not too much, not too much, not as much as we would like to see. Definitely uh, when you factor in some uh, some of the injuries. 145 minutes. Ooh. Mm. And that is that is the highest combination of any of their five man combos, five man lineups. 145 minutes. Offensive rating 110.4, defensive rating 118.1. Net rating, negative 7.7. If that's the best lineup you're going to put out there, it's, they can't score. The, the, and this is a small sample for size, because I would say if 145 minutes is not a, enough to really judge. It might be, but it, it's the, the highest one that's there. It, you can't do much with that. That's telling you what you have. And if that's not the best lineup, that's one of the best lineups. And the, the next one is Cade, Ivy, Duran, Fontecchio, and Asar. Mm. That's 113 minutes, and that's a plus 3.8 net rate. Wait, 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 wait. That lineup with as new as Simone Fontecchio is got 113 minutes compared to 
The supposed core five only getting 145? Crazy. That's crazy. 145. Because so many more of these lineups have uh, Bogey or Killian or... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 hey, 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 hey. I'm just saying what I see. I just, I just read the names that are on the screen. That's all Jeez, I can do. Man. Oh, goodness. KG, what up, though, brother? So, yeah. uh, there, oh. so and, and look at this one, because this might be the, the second one you would say. Yep. Cade, Ivy, Bogey, Stewart, and Durant. How much – that was the best one to probably start the season. How many minutes did that group play? 40. 40. Wow. They didn't even play a full game. That's crazy. What's the, what's the net rating on that group? Uh, offensive rating, 129.4. Defensive rating, 104.9. Plus 24 and a half. That's wow. your best performing group. And they played 40 minutes together 40 that's insane that's insane that's saying <laughs> you that's insane because it means you didn't find this entire year a consistent group of people that your, your best group of people only played a sliver of time together 40 minutes that's less than a third of that those two top performing um or not even two top performing but the two highest volume lineups and they have pretty much the same people so you can't beat people with Stewart, with Cade, Ivy, Asar, Stewart, and and Durant. You can't beat people because you're a minus seven seven. There's mm. nothing you can do with that. You have to go out and get somebody else to fill at least one of those spots in that group, at least one. Yeah. And you can't stop anybody because your defensive rating is one eighteen. That tells Ooh. you everything you need to know about that group. They're good. They're just not good enough to get you through a season and as much as you want to say um if, if people are saying tobias isn't good enough or what or demar de rosen isn't good enough you know what they would increase that offensive rating number By absolutely far. would do it and demar is by far so, right but that's you don't have k can do only so much so and 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 this is probably a deeper dive than we need to do the days that um, Jaden Ivey has 20 plus points. How many of those games do they win? Because when, when Cade has a score next to him, he can just be Cade. And Cade isn't, being Cade isn't go and score 30. That's not being Cade. Being Cade is probably more like 20 and eight assists. That's what you need. If you have Cade out there scoring and only scoring, you're defeating what his strengths are because he can't do the other things that you want him to do. He's if he scores yeah. 30, he's probably not distributing the ball. And if you and if he's not rebounding, he's not involved in being the all around sort of piece that you need. You're not getting the cage you wanted in the draft. You're getting some some lower version of that. He mm. needs people around him where he can distribute and he can be a, a, an integral part of the offense beyond just scoring. And that's the trouble that they've had with that is figuring out a way to get other pieces around him. And, and now I'm all in this, this five man lineup sort of thing. It's just, <laughs> this Ooh. is, this is crazy. It's a harsh reality. Crazy, 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 crazy. <laughs> Killian. <laughs> Killian Cade, Thompson, Stewart, Duran. A hundred minutes, <laughs> offensive rating one hundred one point eight. Oh, oh defense, God. defensive rating one twelve. That's a minus uh, ten. Wow, you can't Damn. beat people. You can't beat people with that. That's that's asking a lot. Oh, that my is God. asking a whole lot. If, if your offensive rating is in the ones, that's or yeah. in the low ones, yeah, you can't do anything. It's with time. That. Beggars cannot be choosers. I do not care how people feel about Tobias Harris, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, who will be back on the trading block. I do not care. They got to bring in some people that can score the rock. They got to bring in some professional basketball players now. Jeez. Right, and, and some defense, because you need, you need to lower yeah. that defensive number, but you absolutely have to raise the offensive number. And I'm going to close that window, because if I go back in there, I'm going to get mad again and just look like, <laughs> are these... Are these 
are these real numbers? Is this math? How did did y'all just make this up? Be, but it shows what you what pe a lot of people would think is the best lineup they could put out on the floor. It just hasn't been effective. And that's not that's discounting. Now you can take all of these reserves. Well, they had to have Isaiah Stewart in there and he wasn't or not Isaiah Stewart, Isaiah Livers. Well, they had Killian in there. Well, you take some of those lineups out and just show me how these five guys performed when they were yeah. together in the time that they had. And that's all of the analysis that I need there is is uh, if you believe in in advanced uh, analytics like that and you put a lot of um, a lot of belief in those numbers, that's all you need to see. There's no other, there's no other explanation for that stuff. That is what it is at that point. Yep. Yeah. So uh kind of speaking to Kate and Ivy, I wanted to get your opinion on the future of these two. There's been mixed reaction online as to whether these guys can play together or not. At times they look like an all-star backcourt, and there's also been times where one player looks better when the other player isn't playing. Um, what do you think they need to improve on as a duo going forward? Uh, and do you think there's some things they can work on to make this fit? And Or do you think they ultimately will not be able to fit together? I think the solution is the same thing we've talked about. They need a an all-star caliber forward, period. Mm -hmm. All-star caliber forward. That will make Cade better. That will make Ivy better because it essentially, because Bogey was injured for a bit, you needed one of them to be your best player. And I don't think they're at that point yet where they can they can go out and be your best scorer, your best player, and be consistent on a night-to-night -night basis, much less healthy on a night-to-night -night basis, but consistent mm -hmm. on a night-to-night -night basis. That's tough. It's a tough to ask for a guy who's in his second year and a guy who's in his third year. It, it's just no other team is really doing that. Even in Houston's situation where now they're knocking on the door of the play-in, they went and got Fred this year and said, hey, Fred, can you be that guy? And and you can carry that on some nights. And, and I think that's some of what we're seeing from Cade and the frustration is on a night-to-night -night basis, he's got to carry that. It's not mm – -hmm. bogey's not available enough. And, and, and uh, Brandon, you were talking about some of the – um, the only player that's safe. I think um, that Jalen Anthony Duran is also safe. I, I, I think there's a lot that's there that he can be so much better and you're just peeling back the layers of what is, is there and what's available for him. I think that combination with Cade can, has the foundation of being something, but again, you need somebody else. When you're coming down and, and, and you don't have Cade or Duran on the court, what are you running? Oh, we can get DeRozan on a, a little flare screen right here. He's got an elbow jumper that's going to fall. Those types of things you can't substitute. And when you're, you're coming down, you make a call and you know what's coming and you can't do anything about it. That's the type of thing that they need. Just, just an automatic. Give me an automatic two. And, and you know that play's called. They don't have that in the repertoire right now. And I think that's one of their biggest um, shortcomings. Is, is there's just no certainty on what you're going to get on any play down the court. Man, that is the word right there. There's absolutely no certainty on what you're going to get from this squad. And that is, uh, it, it's it's not what you want to see out of a team that has uh, realistically gone and stacked the deck with a bunch of players that were top five picks uh, in this draft. Uh, and Jalen Duren, somebody that they had rated top five on their draft board, despite the fact they traded for him at the, for the with mm -hmm. the number 13th pick with the New York Knicks. But, um, I, I do, you know, I, I am hoping, you know, uh, at the exit interviews with Troy Weaver at the end of the season that we get a glimpse into what the strategy may be. Obviously, they're not going to put all their cards out on the table, but just to try and get a feel. I know one of the questions I'm going to ask is, is what direction is this thing moving in? Is it still the youth movement? Or are you looking now to go out there and grab some of those veterans who are not at the end of their careers, but guys that, you know, can step in right away and absolutely help to take the pressure off of this young talent because I do believe that Troy Weaver drafted well, but I don't believe that he set them up for success that well. So, yeah, right. and that's what that's what it looks like. Is, is there's another piece? You need some more pieces to it. Yep. Yeah. I, I listen, man. I I'm looking forward. The thing I'm looking forward to right now is those exit interviews, man. The rest <laughs> of the season, we'll show up. We'll do what we have to do. We will cover the games professionally. But I'm looking forward to those to those exit <laughs> interviews, man. God bless you both. Right, <laughs> doing the Lord's work. <laughs> hey, look, man. I want the chat family as well. Make sure you guys are getting questions in there as well. I'll try my best uh, to ask the ones that I feel like are, are, are uh, 
of an appropriate and professional manner, but getting right to the heart of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob, for your time. As always, man, the legend, Detroit News, Rob Beer is what I call him. He is a sports editor in chief at the Detroit News, doing great work, uh, not just professionally, but uh, as a person as well. Thank you for your time, as always. Thank you for your mentorship. Thank you for the brotherhood, man. We appreciate you, Rob. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank yep. you Thanks, Rod. Thank you. Good news is having Rod Beard on, man. That's bad always news, good news. Sometimes it's having to talk about how bad the Detroit Pistons are. It's almost as bad as uh, the insurance rate.